some Israeli thing up on my computer screen, like some documentary, or now they're doing short documentaries, uh, The Patriot on Channel 14, which is a panel, and uh, today I saw a video with Bibi visiting the soldiers in Gaza, and I have to say I was very impressed, even though I'm not a fan of Bibi, and he said again and again and again, we are not stopping this war until we achieve the goal of getting rid of Hamas. And he said his vala. So that's quite, uh, it's quite a lot of work. And there's a Hashem, not so many, uh, no more deaths on our side. It's heavy, 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 heavy stuff. So there's a Hashem in the merit of our learning. Should protect the soldiers. Bring the Fuashim out to everyone. Say hi to Aryeh and to Zahava and not to Esther and my mother who watches and maybe Katie. She said she's in uh, England now, or traveling at least. Maybe she'll join us eventually. Yael, there's at the shame. Shana Batsheva, who always watches later. So, in the merit of our learning, should protect the soldiers. Was at the shame. Um, so, we're learning from Torah Bet, which my inspiration for learning this Torah, which I had no idea how deep and how far it goes. Was Kitzarich Kol Adam Lomaru Lamin Kol Aolam Lo Nivra La Bishvili. Person has to say and believe that the whole world was created for me. And of course, for me means also for Aryeh and for Mata Esther and for Zahava and for my mother and for everybody else. It was created for everyone equally. And then Rabbi Nachman says, So if the whole world was created just for me, then we have to know that we have the power to fill the gaps in the world and to bring tikkun olam and to fix the world. And how do we fix the world? We fix the world by davening and doing Torah, mitzvot, ma'asim tovim. And he says there's two types of davening. There's a davening before gzar adin and a davening achar gzar adin, after a judgment. And if there's already been a judgment in Shemayim, so then your davening the, the evil energy in the world is given permission to block your davening. I'm just looking for something to create a, a block here. So your davening goes, it's blocked. Can't get through. And he hasn't told us yet how it gets through. But he said, how do you know if your davening is before or after the judgment, the Kazaradin? How do you know if it's before there's a blockage or after there's a blockage? And he said, depending on the joy that you do during the mitzvah. And that's where we are so far in the lesson. After he clarified that every person has to feel that the whole world was created for them, 
וצריך להתפלל על תיקון העולם, in the daven for fixing the world, ולהצילו מגזרות רעות, and to save the world from evil decrees in שמיים, ושיש חילוק באופן התפילה, there's a division between the type of davening, בין קודם גזר הדין, before the judgment is given, לאחר גזר הדין and after the judgment is given. יבער אתה is going to explain now, כיצד יכול האדם לדעת אם הוא קודם גזר הדין ולאחר גזר הדין. Now he's going to say how a person can know whether they're before the judgment or after the judgment. אבל איך ידי, ידי, what is it? יד אינם. איך נדע? How does a person know? בין אם הוא קודם גזר הדין, בין אם הוא לאחר גזר הדין. How does a person know? If they're before the judgment or after the judgment. כדי לדעת, in order to know, כיצד להתפלל, how is a person supposed to daven, right? Because if, I mentioned before, that if it's before the judgment, you could say straight out, but if it's after the judgment, you have to say it in a roundabout way. And last week I told the story of, um, who was it? The Tolner Rebbe, who came to a house that didn't have any children. And when he found, and there was a couple that invited him to get a bracha to have children, And when he found out there weren't any children, he said, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't eat here on Shabbos. I promised myself I would only eat in a home where there's children. They said, but Rebbe, you know, that's why we brought you here. He said, sorry. So they said to him, but Rebbe, don't you, didn't you promise that you would eat a meal with us? You're just going to like run out? He said, don't worry, I'll be back next year. And next year he came back and they had a child. So that was the Rebbe davening for them to have a child. After there was the Gazar Adin, after there was the judgment, And doing it in a roundabout way so that his davening was not hit by that obstacle by the, that the evil energy is given after the judgment is given. So there is a way to break through. It's by not di- directly mentioning it. So we have to know which way are we supposed to daven. Are we supposed to daven directly for Hashem, you know, please give these people children? Or are we supposed to say, Hashem, I can't eat in their home unless they... I, I only eat in a home with people that have children, and they, and they ask me to come to their home for Shabbos. Umeshiv, and he answers, Al yidei ha-mitzvot sh'ano osim, how do we know if it's before or after the, the judgment through the mitzvot that we do? Im al-gishim b'kiyumam simcha g'dola, if we feel when we're doing the mitzvot a great joy, yecholim anachno leida, בין קודם גזר הדין לאחר גזר הדין. We're able to know if it's before the judgment or after the judgment. ודווקא כשעושים המצוות בשמחה גדולה כל כך, and specifically when we do the מצוות with a great amount of joy, עד שאין רוצים בשום שכר עולם הבא, without wanting any reward in the world to come, אלא הוא רוצה שיזמין לו הקדוש ברוך הוא מצווה אחרת בשכר מצווה זו. But what does a person only want? They only want for Hashem to please bring another mitzvah to pay for the mitzvah that the person did. ובזה מתברר, right? The person on the level where they, they want to give, for example, tzedakah. They don't want to give tzedakah because they know that there's a reward for them in the world to come. Or even for their own benefit in this world. They just want to do it for Hashem. And they're looking forward to the next mitzvah coming, and the next mitzvah coming, and the next mitzvah coming. And that's the level of the tzaddik amor. That's a complete, perfect tzaddik is on that level. And most of us are not anywhere near that level. But to understand, that's a level of doing a mitzvah without wanting a reward. Shebazemit barer, this is, now through this is going to be clarified. Shekol asiyat ha-mitzvah ina b'shvel atzmo. Doing the, the entire doing of the mitzvah is not for the person themselves. Ela rak bishvir Hashem yidraf, but only for Hashem. Kama amar chachamenu zichonu v'cha, as said to bless the memory, said in Birkei Avot, tzchar mitzvah, mitzvah. What is the reward of a mitzvah? The reward is a mitzvah. Of a mitzvah is a mitzvah. Right, because a mitzvah is not something that can be paid in money. or in actions, or in anything. It's something that's beyond this world. We, of course, know the word mitzvah comes from tzavta. Tzavta are pliers. Pliers take two extremes and bring them together. A mitzvah takes two extremes, the finite, Hashem was the infinite, 
and brings the infinite together with the finite. How does that happen? Through a mitzvah. The mitzvah is Hashem reaching out to us. We can't reach out to Hashem because Hashem is infinitely further away. So no matter how close I get to the infinite, it's always infinitely further away. But if the infinite comes towards me, then I can make a connection with the infinite, and that's what a mitzvah is. And that's why the reward for a mitzvah is another mitzvah, because it's on something, a level beyond this world. The reward that a person wants for the mitzvah is that they give the person another mitzvah to keep. Because the person derives spiritual pleasure from the mitzvah itself. Because there's no greater pleasure than this. Um, no greater pleasure than a human being doing a mitzvah. And here he brings this quote here. She yalud isha kavutz mechomer. That a woman that's made of just flesh and blood can bring a new life into this world. That a person merits to do um, the will of Hashem. So this ki en ta'anu gadol mize. There's no greater pleasure than this. So there are all kinds of pleasures in this world. There's the pleasure of making money. There's the pleasure of eating food. There's the pleasure of, of sex and of seeing things and the pleasure of music and all kinds of pleasures. But the ultimate pleasure is doing a mitzvah on the level of not expecting a reward. That's the ultimate mitzvah. That's the ultimate level, the ultimate pleasure. So here, on Friday night, I'm just giving you a small example. There was a guy who came to me just before davening. Boy, and last Friday night was such a mess. I, I'm glad that's over. The rabbi had announced that he canceled Mincha and Kabbalat Shabbat would start early. I didn't know what was going on. People showed up, they said, what's with Mincha? We started Mincha. And then as we're reading the Torah, people show up for Kabbalat Shabbat. In the meantime, we're all fasting. Okay, so in the beginning, there's a guy who comes to me, he says, you're the Gabbai? I said, yeah, sure, I'm the Gabbai. He said, I need a place to eat after davening. No problem. He said, to remind me after davening. So davening is finally over, 535. Got this massive migraine, not doing so great. Um, the guy comes over, he says, oh, you have a place for me. And I'm like, oh my God. I just started asking everybody, you have a place, you have a place, you have a place, you have a place. One guy says, oh, there's a guy outside. He said he has a place for one person. I ran outside. I find the guy, we have a little conversation. I said, can you take this guy? He says, yes. And the guy says, thank you very much. And he goes on his way. Now, at the time, I was really just focused on finding the guy a place to eat. But afterwards, I felt this real pleasure. This real pleasure of simply doing a mitzvah. And I wasn't thinking to myself, wow, look at the reward I'm going to get in the world to come for setting this guy up for a meal. I was just focused on finding the guy a meal. Here I did the mitzvah of finding him a meal. Vachnasat uh, Ochim, or whatever it's called, Shidu Chachnasat Ochim, and um, and there's a great pleasure that comes with it. It's a pleasure that doesn't fit into any of those physical pleasures that I mentioned before. When we get to the world to come, I'm assuming it's a we we actually learned a lesson in the Kutim Oran, Rav Cheshenai, Shabu Efo Ashnei Rav, Ezat Hashem Aaron Ben Chamaliba. Some days he shows up, some days he doesn't. Today he didn't show up, so we learned a lesson. My, my old friend, Michael Abraham, he used to say, what's a good memory? The world to come. And that was a quote from the Kutei Moran. So Rabbi Nachman says, what's a good memory? The world to come. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you remember that you were in the world to come. It means that you remember that you're going to the world to come. And if you remember that you're going to the world to come, then the pleasures that you have in this world, you'll be willing to maybe sacrifice some of them in order to do mitzvot. And when we get to the world to come, we don't have any physical pleasures. We only have spiritual pleasures. And apparently we're going to bask in the light of the Shechina, of Hashem's presence. I don't even understand what these things mean. But that feeling that you get when you do a mitzvah, just for doing the mitzvah, that's the feeling that you'll get in the world to come, apparently. And that's where we're going. It's, it's kind of like, I think I once had a dream about this. Kind of like there's a heater. I'm trying to put a heater here. I can't see it on my phone now. The heater in the, in the middle of the room. And everybody around is cold. The people that are closer to the heater are getting more heat. They're getting more spiritual energy. 
the people that are further away are getting less heat, less spiritual energy. So imagine the person that did Torah and Mitzvot and comes to the world to come with all their Torah and Mitzvot, they get to be closer to the spiritual light and get more spiritual pleasure from it. Somebody who did less gets less of it. And so that's this tanug of, of doing a mitzvah, this pleasure of getting a mitzvah. Okay, so you mentioned here, Shiyalu di Shakarutz Mechomer, Yiskel la'asot et Ratzon Hashem. So that's the, uh, the footnote on that. Kama'amar Sham, as it said there in Ot Yud, where is, I guess, in Pirkei Avot, Vezer Hashem. And this is what it says. At tzadikim ha'gdolim ha'amitiim e'nam evakshim b'neanim m'izeh ha'olam. The great and true tzadikim don't want anything and don't derive any pleasure from this world. Afilu kesut kechut ha'serva, even like the um, a hair's breadth. Dak min atak, the smallest of the smallest. Vehem ovdim u'miyagim v'chol kocham kol yamehem ve'avodat Hashem be'emet. And they work and they toil with all of their energy all the days of their life in serving Hashem in truth. The Afan Pichen and nonetheless, Einam Chafetzim Beshum Olam Abaklam. They're not asking for any reward in the world to come at all. Rak Kol Simchatam Hu Be'a Mitzvah Atzma. Just their whole joy in life is doing the mitzvah itself. Sheikau Simchatam Hu that the main aspect of their joy is. The mitzvot that they merit to do during their lifetime for Hashem. Because there's no joy or pleasure greater than this. That a woman gets a, a drop of sperm and enters into her body and it makes another human being, right? It's like something from nothing. So, you know, science um, can take uh, an egg and sperm and put them together and begin the process, and then there's artificial wombs and there's all kinds of things. Uh, I don't think any human being has been born in an artificial womb. Well, I wouldn't want to be in the therapy sessions of a, a baby that was born from an artificial womb. <laughs> So they can bring the two together, but you can't make the two materials from nothing and start the process. That, that's already beyond, you know. All of science is taking things that exist and using them in new ways, but not creating things that didn't exist at all. Maybe discovering things that we didn't know before. So here, this miracle of just a normal flesh and bones human being is able to create a baby, that's like us doing a mitzvah. Yizkel ha'asot etzon Hashem, Yitbarach, the merits to do Hashem's will. El Melech Chai Bekayam, Adon, Akon, the king of life and everything, master of everything. Asher the Gdulato in Cheker, and there's no comparison to him. Okay. Veli Scott and Madrigazo, and to merit this level, Tsarich Shigibatel Haadam et Yeshuto, Vatsmuto de Gamre. In order to reach this level, a person has to nullify their ego and their self-awareness completely to reach the level of only doing a mitzvah for the sake of the mitzvah. And so Rabbi, Rabbi Nassim explained in the Kutei Alachot, this is what it says, This type of joy, it's impossible to merit. Only if a person completely nullifies themselves, meaning their ego, to the level that a person doesn't even know that they exist. That's the end of the language. Rabbi Yehobazir, and the explanation for this is, Then a person merits to be completely unified with Hashem, already in this world. Right? On the level that we reach in the world to come, you can reach it on this, in this world, if you completely nullify your ego and you're only existing to do Torah and Mitzvot, Hashem is the ultimate perfection of joy. 
Me'etzim asiyat mitzvah. And then a person can reach the perfection of joy by doing a mitzvah. It's nice to even just read the words. To know that such a thing exists. You kind of experience it through the words. Shalom to Yudi. Okay. Belechen. Eino otzeb bishvil atzmo klum. So this person doesn't want anything for themselves. Afilu lo sechar olam haba. Not even merit in the world to come. The reward in the world to come. This is the difference between these two levels. Between the totally righteous tzaddikim, whose whole desire is to keep another mitzvah, and the, and the, the tzaddikim that want the reward in the world to come. And this is like the division of the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu Leven Nivuat Shar Hanavim, and the and the prophecy of the other prophets. So now he gets quite deep into this um, between Moshe Rabbeinu and the other prophets. So I'll just summarize before we get into it. We know that Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem spoke to Moshe and said, "Tell this to the Jewish people," and Moshe would say. This is what Hashem said. And all the other prophets, they had like visions, and they would say, here's what I saw in my vision, or here's what I think I hear that Hashem is saying. And so that's the difference between the tzaddik amor. The tzaddik amor, the, the totally righteous tzaddik, is on the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, where they're really doing a mitzvah only for the sake of the mitzvah and for no ulterior motive. And a tzaddik that's not on the level is still doing the mitzvah, but they're doing it for the reward in the world to come. I don't know, Arya, when you do a mitzvah, you do it for the, the, the reward in the world to come, or you do it for the mitzvah? It depends on the day. You have sometimes where you say, I'm doing it for the reward? Sure. In my head, I mean, subconsciously yeah. or something. But yeah. yeah, I can understand. Yeah, you know, like um, I slept the kugel every Friday to shul. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, well, it's pain in the butt, but at least I get the reward in the world to come for this. Okay. So that's the level of being on a tzaddik on the lower level. And the higher level is doing the mitzvah where you just want to do the mitzvah. You know, somebody says, can you make havdalah for me? And you make havdalah for them. And you're not doing it because you want the reward in the world to come. You're doing it because you just want to make havdalah. Okay, so the difference between Moshe Rabbeinu and the other tzaddikim. The Pebul Shashinashi explains the pasuk, the verse from Midbar. Moshe en Hamato. And Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes. He said, This is what Hashem commanded. Rashi explains. I like the verb there. All of the prophets prophesied. The Ko Amar Hashem. This is what it seems like Hashem said, or thus said Hashem. No Moshe, in addition to them, Moshe, Shehit Nabe, And so Moshe didn't say Ko, which means this like this is what Hashem said. He said Zehadavar. This is the thing that Hashem said. There wasn't any Ko. The ko is like a glass, it's like an opaque glass that doesn't allow light to come through it. Glass that's not clear. And so the light of the sun doesn't come clearly through it. Here we have clear glass. But if it was opaque, that's how the other prophets received the prophecy. This is the example of somebody, or an analogy of somebody who doesn't see fully the prophecy, but open the whole my ear in a clear and enlightened way. It's as if the thing is very far away, but and that's why it's not completely clear. This is the meaning of the word ko. Kemo 
ke'en, as it, like the word ke'en, which means as if. V'zeh adavar, when Moshe said, this is the thing, this is the word, u'bchinat aspaklaria ha'meira, you know, aspaklaria are like spectacles. Um, this is like a light, uh, a glass that allows the light to come fully through it. When the person sees something completely clear and full of light, like a person that points their finger, says, this is what I'm seeing. As opposed to somebody who says, you know, that's what it seems like. Or I guess we have, you know, like... Um, I don't know what it's called, the art where things were very precise. And then we have abstract art, which the artists went all over the place. And so you could look sometimes at, at paintings, like what's the guy's name, the Dutch? Um, uh, I, have, I can see the pictures in my head. Uh, Vermeer, I think is his name. Vermeer. So this guy, he made these very, very precise paintings. It turns out that he had like a light box. So there would be a woman sitting there, and then the the her image would be projected by a mirror onto a canvas, and he would trace the canvas. And that's how we would get this very precise um, picture. And then you have guys like Picasso, who are making you know square heads that are upside down and body parts all over the place, and and so that's the difference. You have Moshe Rabbeinu that sees it precisely. And you have the other prophets that see something, that they see something. Okay, and that's the difference between doing a mitzvah with a reward and without the reward. That's what he's trying to say here. It's like a person that points their finger and says, this is the thing. And just like these are the two types of prophecy, there are two types of ways of serving Hashem. The person who does the mitzvah for the reward in the world to come. The person doesn't really enjoy doing the mitzvah in this world. If they did not give him the reward in the world to come, the person would not do the mitzvah. And this is the level of ko, as if. The opaque glass. Like a person that sees something, something from far away. So the person does the mitzvah for some reward that's way out there in the distance. Hainu achar olam hazeh olam haba that is after this world and the world to come. The shinum schar and the and the pang of the reward nikra v'shem navi is called a navi I guess because it's a prophecy that it, it'll be in the future. Ki nun bet yud aleph these letters of the rashi tevot or the acronym for a pasuk in tehillim yavo. Berina nosei alumotav. A person that comes with joy will carry their um, harvest. The sham, the pasukaze, nirmaz an shilum zchar. And this verse is hinted at paying the reward in the world to come. Haloch yelech ubacho, this we say in Birkat the Mazon. Haloch yelech ubacho, nosei meshech hazara. The person that goes with out uh, in sadness and crying, carries a bag of their seeds. So there's the person that's joyous in doing the mitzvah, and the person that's only doing, that's kind of like, doesn't really want to do the mitzvah, but they're doing it because they know that there's a reward in the world to come. He spreads out the, the seeds of his mitzvot, from a place of crying, of, of tearing. Ach lebasof, but in the end, bo yavo berina He's going to come with joy, carrying his bag of harvest. She yismach la'atid lavo, ba'olam haba, that the person will be joyous in the world to come in the future. She kabel eschar mitzvot, that the person will be happy that they're going to receive the mitzvot, the reward of the mitzvot. 
Roshay Tevo Chen Yavo Berina Nosea Lamota. This is how he came up with Navi. The letters here Yud Bet Non Aviv. It gets very deep. Like this is this is heavy duty Rabbi Nachman here. Yavo Berina Nosea Lamota. That the person will come back joyously carrying their harvest. Roshay Tevo that make those the beginning letters make up the word Navi, which is prophet. Meaning prophet, not money, but prophecy. Ki ha yedi'ah she le'olam abayi kebem schar, because the knowledge that a person is going to receive a reward in the world to come, mo geshet etzlo kayom, is felt like it's today. Lo goemet lo kfar me'ata simcha, and causes the person to be happy, joyous already right now. Zel b'chinat nevu'ah, and this is connected to a prophecy, that every one of the Jewish people has, meaning everybody is going to have a place in the world to come. It's kind of like if a person gets a, a check, they don't have the actual money in their hand, but they're excited because they know that when they deposit it, they're going to get the money. Another person does it, they don't want any reward. They don't want to get paid for it. They don't want anything. They just derive pleasure from doing it. And this is also... Um, Oh no, he was talking about the tzaddikim. He was talking about the joy before a mitzvah and the, and the joy before the judgment. But doing a mitzvah before the judgment and before, and after the judgment is the, how do you know if, if if it's before or after? Because of the joy that you feel. And now he's describing the different levels of joy through the tzaddikim. Harei shel navi romez an shilum schar leolam so, Prophet hints at the reward in the world to come. We'll go for like another uh, five or so minutes. Ulam zero navibas espaklaria sheina meira. But this is the Prophet in the opaque glass. Shero et adabal kerachok vimenem ma'od. That the person sees it far off in the distance. Ad haolam aba. To the world to come. Okay, so we'll do one more paragraph here. אבל נבי שמית שמית נבא בזה הדבר, but a prophet that says this is the thing רומז על מי שאינו רוצה בשכר המצוות. This hints at a person that doesn't want a reward for the mitzvot, אלא רוצה במצווה בעצמה, but just wants to do the mitzvah itself. שניתן לו לעשות מצווה נוספת that will allow the person to do another mitzvah. Now I think that Really, even what I'm sure everybody's done a mitzvah on the level where they don't think about doing the mitzvah, and there is a certain pleasure in doing the mitzvah. I, I can tell you, I get to this place at times. Um, like when there was a guy who's since passed away, David Barshaw. Did you remember David? He was really crazy, he was definitely one of my craziest clients. Oh my god, what I went through with this guy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Really, when we found out that he died, we only found out a year after he died. It was like, ah, uh, it was like a relief. He was kind of homeless. The police would bring him to my house in the middle of the night and just drop him off at my house because he said I was his guardian. <laughs> he died at like 70 something. He's like 20 years older than me. And he uh, was always on drugs and he was saying, Crazy stuff, but so many times he would come to my house and he'd say, Barack, I'm hungry, I don't have any food. And sometimes Noga was there by herself, she got used to feeding him. And we would just put a bunch of food, so if it was Shabbos, I'd pile the food up in an aluminum pan, just give him a bunch of food, he'd say, can I, can I have a fork? Do you have a plastic fork? Yeah, I gave him a plastic fork and a napkin and some lemonade and, a, and like a bottle like this. And, uh, and then he was on his way. And really, I can, I'm sure Noga felt the same way. We weren't doing this for the reward in the world to come. We're just doing it because here's a guy who really needs help, and we're about Hashem, we're able to help him, and we're just happy to give him the food, and that's it. And then afterwards, you know, really, it, that does help you suppress your ego quite a bit. Like, if, if you feel haughty after doing that, you've got a lot of work to do. It makes you realize, Hashem, you know, you're being really nice to me. You gave me food, you gave me a home, you didn't make me like this guy, this poor guy, Rahman al Islam. And um, and I get to feed him. You know, that that's really nice of you, Hashem. And this is incredible pleasure. 
And it's not even on the level that Rabbi Nachman is talking about here, that I did it so that I can have another mitzvah. I simply did it for the mitzvah. I just wanted to be nice to this guy. That's the only reason. And so that's the level he was talking about. Okay. The person just wants to do a mitzvah so that they can do another mitzvah. That the person is so happy. He, he writes here. And then in quote, in parentheses, because, you know, in Rabbi Nachman's time, this is really written by Rabbi Nassim, even though his Hebrew is really incredible, considering there were no ulpans and no academia of uh, the Hebrew language, there was no standardized uh, grammar. So when he says, like, Shehu uh, Mesameach, here he's correcting in Hebrew. Shehu Sameach, Kolkach Basiata, is so happy in doing the mitzvah. Ad She Mima Es, the Chol means Sechar, until the person rejects any type of reward, even Basechar Olam Abba, even the reward in the world to come. Nimtza She Olam Abba Shedo, so then it follows that this person's world to come, that it's this unification with Hashem by mitzvah ba'atzma and doing the mitzvah itself, because the person merits to feel the joy and the pleasure of doing the mitzvah that from the reward that they would get in the world to come already in this world. And what is the pleasure that we'll have in the world to come? It's being completely unified with Hashem. That a person derives pleasure from the light, the basking in the light of the Shechina. Which is the greatest joy, the greatest joy. And this is what the acronym for Navi, Nun Bet Yud Aleph is, Hainu. Shilum sachar kfar kan ba'olam azeh. Receiving the reward of the world to come already in this world. B'chinat zadavar. This is the level of Moshe Rabbeinu that a person can point and say, this is the thing, meaning the reward in the world to come, we don't really know what it's like, but when you experience pleasure from doing a mitzvah in this world, you're on the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, and you can say, this is what it feels like. B'chinat asfaklaya ha This is the clear glass. K'mo adam ha'ro'eh. Like a person sees something right in front of them very clearly and, and, and in detail. A person enjoys the mitzvah, tries pleasure in the mitzvah, and the person's reward is right in front of their eyes. It's amazing. You know, it's the only thing to this class that I read this stuff so detailed. Otherwise, if I read it on my own, I don't think, I don't know, maybe sometimes I do get into it like this, but not not as much as the class, so thank you everyone for listening. Okay, I'll tell you a short story before we finish tonight. Um, I was thinking about the story, and I have a, a little piece of paper where I wrote down the details of the story, like something 10 years ago, I don't know. I couldn't find it in my office. I didn't remember which Rebbe it is. I don't know if it's the Amshinov Rebbe, the Kozen Shermagit, the Aftarav. I don't know. It's all of the above. All of the Tzadikim, what, whichever one it was. So there was a, a Rebbe came to visit one of his Hasidim, and um, there were these two Hasidim that had borrowed money from one another. Or one had borrowed money from the other and hadn't paid it back for many, many years. And so now that the Rebbe is there, the Chassid who was owed the money, he decided to come to the Rebbe and ask him to help out to get his friend, the other Chassid, to pay him back. So the Rebbe calls the other Chassid, he says, No, what's the deal? You gotta pay back your friend. You borrowed money, you gotta pay it back. And he said, Well, Rebbe, the problem is I don't have the money. You know, he lent me the money and and I used it, and I, I never made back enough money to pay him back, and he can't afford it. And the guy says, well, that's not my problem, so let him take out a loan, and he'll have to pay back someone else. Why do I have to suffer? The guy says, I can't take out a loan. Nobody's going to lend me any money. I don't have enough money. 
So the Rebbe says to him, I want you to bring all the money you have in the house right now and put it here on the table. So the guy brings, you know, like whatever, 10 rubles, whatever it was. And the Rebbe says, nope, you have more money in the house, go do bidikat chametz. Go like you're checking for chametz, find everything you have, it brings another few coins, you get like 10 and a half rubles. So the Rebbe says to the other chassid, okay, here's your payment. <coughs> he says, but Rebbe, you borrowed a thousand rubles. It's not even close to what I'm owed. So the Rebbe says, no problem. He takes the coins, he starts counting. One, two, three, four, five. He goes all the way up to 10,000. Counting the same 10 rubles, 10,000 times. He says, here's your 10,000 rubles. And he gives the guy 10 rubles. And of course, within a short amount of time, he had 10,000 rubles. So, why did I want to tell the story? I'm thinking, you know, look at this is the level of tzaddikim. When Habakkuk, one of the last prophets, was asked, how do you summarize the whole Torah? Um, what is it? V'tzaddik be'emunato yichye. That the tzaddik lives off of emuna. Meaning that what are we ultimately, ultimately supposed to get to in this world? The level where we have complete emuna in a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And here this, this Rebbe was on such a high level, and obviously his chassid on such a high level, that they believed that the money isn't even real. It's the bracha from the Rebbe that brings the money. Ezat Hashem should have lots of rubles. Amen. Bitcoin and shekels and dollars and everything else. Okay, I should call everyone. Thank you for coming. Sorry. I